think that's why a lot of people don't want to learn or study or teach on um, evil spirits, divinations, and witches and everything because of fear. And we have no fear because we have all authority through Christ. Mm -hmm. If you keep that in mind, there's nothing to be afraid of. Exactly. Um, I do want to, just to let you know, uh, I was talking to someone earlier that I had prepared this, took me months and months and months and months to prepare. I taught a six week course and um, everything I gleaned from, Bible. Uh, I got a lot of this information from Kenneth Hagin. How many know Kenneth Hagin? Yes. He even talks about visitation to hell and being demons. So this is not a new teaching. This has been around since, since before man. Um, a lot of it came from Derek Prince. Anyone know Derek Prince? He was actually a pastor. He, went to North Africa, Egypt, Sudan, and Palestine where he cast out evil spirits, where he actually ran into them. This also, David Middleton has spent years teaching uh, and ministering on healing and deliverance. And Bob Larson, which, you know, could be a little of the, I'm not, um, he is more of an exorcist, and some of what he does is kind of way out there even for me to believe. <laughs> Okay, um, and then George Bloom is also a bishop who teaches deliverance ministry and witchcraft specifically. Some people have just specific parts of, that they teach and minister on deliverance. Today, we have covered demons, unclean evil spirits, their objectives, characteristics, and how they attack and enter us. Last week, we kind of went over oppression, depression, and possession, and the differences. We talked about addiction and how it can enslave a person. Today we're going to go over, touch on witchcraft, confronting spirits and demons, and taking the authority Jesus Christ gave us to get rid of them. Uh, there are different hierarchies of evil of spirits, both good and evil, that we'll go over today, and how we get to look at all this and walk according to the way God intends for us to walk. Um, I have some materials up here, prayers. Uh, I have scriptures on authority. So I have all the tools that we need, according to the Bible, on how to come against these. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to start with witchcraft. There are three main <coughs> words that come to mind when you speak about witchcraft. And it is witchcraft, divinations, and sorcery, which are wizards. Um, I was talking to someone else today, this morning, before we started, how Satan tried to make things seem attractive, like Harry Potter. You know, how many kids get into Harry Potter? You know, or horoscopes. He wants it to be attractive so that we'll get into it and, and just think it's kind of amusing at first. And then, bam, he's got you. And all of a sudden, if you're doing horoscopes, you're reading horoscopes every single day. You're looking for them for guidance. I mean, whenever I lived in the world, I did not, I didn't want to look at one. <laughs> no, just, no, not interested. Um, witchcraft is a dominating Satan, satanic force. Satan works through. It is the source that captivates, dominates, and manipulates and controls. So if you see those things, that's probably witchcraft. It works by spells, curses, and personal domination. It is never the will of God that one person dominate or control another. God gave us free will for a reason, and no one should ever take that free will away from us. Amen. <laughs> Any situation where a person dominates another, the source is evil or witchcraft and self-serving. In James 3, 14 to 16, it says, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast or lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For every envy and self-seeking exists, confusing, and every evil thing are there. So if something is just for self, you're not considering the other person to be aware if, if you know someone like that. Divination. Divination deals with fortune-telling realm, 
which includes crystal balls, dreams, palm reading, teacups, and tarot cards, horoscopes. Uh, I was thinking, speaking with someone about when I was a kid, I did Ouija boards. I've done tarot cards, you know, whenever before I got back in the church. So I have to confess those sins. God forgive me for doing that and even entertaining it and remove that from my life. Anything that I could have picked up from that. Um, most of the world uses this type of satanic power and thinks nothing of it. It's amusing. Um, and I was just talking about the person who does horoscopes daily. You know, it's amusing. Oh, let's see what it says. I'm going to have it today. You know, and then they start reading it every, every other day and then every day. And then, oh man, I can't be in the house without reading my horoscope. What's going to happen to me today? No, that's kind of grabbing the Bible and saying, God, you lead me. You have your will in my life today. Amen. Lord, you are my power and my yes. authority. Amen. And that's what we should do. Not preach yes. the newspaper or anything mm -hmm. else. Preach the Bible Amen. and just confess your, your, you want God to have his will in your life that day. Amen. It says, fortune tellers are like the servants of Satan. And they have Satan as their master. In Acts 16, 16 to 18, I'm going to just read a little bit of this. It says, uh, this was the... Uh, about the certain damsel possessed. It says, These men were the servants of the Most High God, which slew the way, which show unto the way of salvation. She's talking. And we don't know how this uh, damsel is talking to Paul, but Paul got grieved. Finally, after a few days, he got grieved. He got upset. Maybe she was saying it mockingly at him. Or maybe, and, and the Bible doesn't say this, so this is me thinking. Uh, it's just, maybe he was hoping that she heard enough of the world word that she could be saved whenever he cast that demon out, you know? Um, we don't know what the thinking was. Um, she was stating the truth. But, like I said, what is it mockingly when Paul got grieved? In Luke 11, 26, he did not even want more demons entering her. This is when seven other spirits would enter someone who's unsaved. So if this damsel who had the spirit of divination is going, speaking the truth, saying that these men, um, men are servants of the Most High God, which will show the way to salvation. That was the truth. She was saying that. But we don't know why Paul waited to cast out that spirit. That it could be nice to think that she had listened and was saved. Mm -hmm. And sorcery. It says sorcery. I think what it's saying there is to be careful if you are trying to cast out a spirit of an unsaved person. They need to hear the word of God, and we're going to get into that more later. That um, sorcery operates through objects. This is something like a physical result. Uh, operates through fetishes, charms. Amulets, bracelets, rings, and things like that. I think in Harry Potter, I think I, I caught some of it. Don't they have like a ring or something that they carry? And anyhow, this is like a special mm -hmm. ring. Anyhow, um, that is like a sorcery. Uh, an example was a man was having problems walking and problems with his legs. When prayer did not work, it was discovered that he had a bracelet on his ankle that his girlfriend gave him. They asked about the girl, and if the bracelet meant anything to him, he agreed to have it cut off. His leg was immediately healed. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what kind of curses are on objects. Mm -hmm. There are two different kinds of witches. There's known witches. <coughs> These witches, they practice spells, uh, have familiars, potions, burn candles, and they live <coughs> their lives as a self perceived <coughs> witch. They study to be a witch. They, that's what they are doing. And then there's unknown witches. This type of witch does not know that they are a witch and others don't know either. They could be in a church and seek control over a pastor or its members. I know I've heard uh, Kenneth Hagin talk about how the women got together and tried to force the pastor to do something um, or you know they were gonna cause trouble. If you're trying to force your pastor to do something, that is not, yeah. that is unknown witchcraft. You're manipulating him. Jezebel's spirit. Yes, yes. 
Some are found in homes and will try to dominate the family, spouse, friends, or children without knowing. And I even talked about this last week about a woman. Oh, you're going to make me cry if you don't do this. <laughs> She's forcing them to manipulate them out of love to do what she wants. <laughs> so most time, this type of witch is a woman, most of the time. And it's when a husband may have failed to take the role of the lead of the family. Witchcraft is a number one reason for broken homes in America. Approximately one out of every three humans in the USA have more homes broken due to witchcraft than anywhere in the world. This was in 2014, I wrote this. So it goes back, so it's probably higher today. Satan has power and is allowed to operate in these women, and most don't know it. A man can be successful in business, however, at home and church, he's got no, no success because he's ruled by an unknown witch. When we pray, we, are we asking God or others to do what we want them to do? Is it self-serving? Or are we praying, God, I know your word says this, so we're going to pray according to your word, the will of God. And that's how we should pray, yes. Witchcraft is alive and well in our co uh, oh, yeah. communities. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, you know, I want to tell you just a little incident. Uh, they do have power, but it's a Satan's power. And it's only because they believe in it and because they practice it. First of all, on a plane, um, I don't even know what minister it was. He was telling of an incident that he had when he was riding on a plane. There was a man sat down beside him. And when the um, stewardesses came by to offer them um, some food or something, he said, no, thank you. I'm, I don't want anything. And so uh, the man next to him uh, said, I noticed that you refused anything to eat. Are you sick or is there anything wrong? He said, no, I'm fasting. So, you know, we use that word fasting among our society and everything and Christians. And so he automatically thought this man must be a Christian. And he says, are you a Christian? And he said, no. And he said, oh, what, uh, what church or what do you belong to? And he said, I'm a Satanist. Oh. And he said, um, and so then he kind of began to feel a little spooked and he started moving over closer to the window. <laughs> <laughs> but then but he felt that he was compelled to ask him further. He said, well, what are you fasting for? He says, I'm fasting that my brother and his wife will separate and get a divorce. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, Satan comes to separate people. He comes to divide people. So they believe in Satan just like we believe in God. And they yes. do what they can. And the thing is, sometimes they put us to shame with the things that they yes. do. When my grandson was out hunting one time up towards Venus Mountains, he came upon a place. He had left his, left his truck somewhere, and he was walking down this trail. And he saw a cave over there, and he thought, well, he'd just go over and explore that cave. But he said it was really strange. He says there was rocks set in a specific pattern, like a circle, mm -hmm. near this cave. And he saw a lot of bones of animals, little animals that seemed like around it. And he said all of a sudden he decided to go back to his truck that he felt like he was in a strange place. There's something that's really weird about it, he said. And all of a sudden he was so disoriented he didn't know which direction was even up, north, south, or whatever. And he is one that travels out in the wilderness areas a lot. And he never had an experience like this before. In fact, he called us as soon as he got back to his truck and he said, I don't know what happened to me, but something very strange there happened. And he said, I got my compass out to see which direction it was back to my truck. He said, I didn't know which way to go. And he said, I headed in this one direction I felt was right. But then I decided I better kind of check my compass. And it was crazy. It wouldn't even work. His cell phone wouldn't work. Nothing would work. And he said, I finally prayed. I sat down and I asked God, Lord, show me which direction to go. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I felt an inclination to go the opposite way that I was walking. And when I started going that way, pretty soon I began to recognize the direction I was going in and was near my truck. I believe that was probably yes. a center where witches had gathered. Yeah, yeah. And they had, and so they, there's a, an atmosphere that they create. There's and they already know that they have been praying yes. against our president and against our nation. Yeah. And so we as Christians, we need to combat that. Yes, and realize that, that is real. That's real. And we need to combat that. And they fast just like we would fast in just a minute. Whenever um, we want a closer relationship with God and we're looking for guidance for something, 
When we fast, we, we feed the spirit, not the body. To go without food, you're reading the word of God and you're fasting. If you have, if you want to seek God's help more, they fast to get more power from Satan. Right? Yes. So they deny the flesh in order to feed their spirit, oh. even as evil spirit. Yes. Um, my daughter is involved in witchcraft. She used to live here, and mm -hmm. she moved from Arizona to Wyoming with her husband and my three granddaughters, and partly because so she could practice witchcraft without us knowing it or seeing it or confronting her or whatever. And um, she used to be a born-again Christian, spirit-filled. Um, I raised him in church, and um, my ex-husband's family started getting her involved in that. And, she's, and she kind of mocked me, you think I'm going to go to hell for this? And I said, maybe not right away, but if you're going to get more and more deceived. You're going to get more sucked into it. And then, yeah, you are going to go to hell. I said, yeah. you need to give your life. And, well, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I don't believe in the Bible anymore. But I believe in God. You can't have God without Jesus Christ. You can't have heaven without Jesus Christ. And I give her scripture after scripture. She's like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I don't want you to talk about Jesus or whatever. You know, So our relationship got... Kind of cut. Some, some yeah. people say that they believe in God but not Satan, or and that's just crazy to me. Right. When you have one, that there's the other. Right. Um, right. So. In Cuba, when I was a missionary, God made it very apparent that I was in witchcraft. What's her name? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I had witchcraft as children. Yeah, she's teaching us her granddaughters. I was a great. Christian when I went, and he had me praying Thank all you. night long. He took me outside of the um, hotel. And there was nobody in the hotel. I thought it was really strange. He told me to go to the beach and took to the beach. And I saw it was a full moon and I saw the three rings that they do their their with their, their seance and all that, you know, their power. And I looked said, God, why did you bring me to see this? You took me out of it. Why would you bring me to see it? And all I heard was go back to your room and pray in the Holy Spirit and do not pray in the prayer language and do not stop till I tell you. So it was all night, it was well after midnight, and it was the sun came up and he said, Okay, I could hear a you know, stop in my heart. Went into church, went into Havana because I wanted to see the church where my parents used to visit before the revolution. Mm -hmm. And so there was this tent, white tent in the corner, and I was with the pastor that, you know, leads the missionaries there, and um, we were walking up to the church, and all of a sudden, I saw this white tent with this person in white with a real veil, heavy veil thing on, on their head, and I walked up, as I walked up, she was reading palms, and as I walked up, she shooed the person out and closed closed it. And I said, that figure was so ugly. Is that a man or a woman? And he said, it's a woman. And she's a white witch, which mm -hmm. Fidel Castro imports from Africa to keep the people in witchcraft in oppression. Yeah. And so on the way back out, I went down the stairs and I said, I just want to see what happens. She put, she shoot two women out, she closed up, put her veil on, and walked way away from me and around. She me. felt the stronger spirit. Right. 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 And I said to I said to Pastor Alan, why did she do that? He said, didn't you tell me that God had you praying in the Holy Spirit? Yeah, you have the anointing said, all over you. He yeah. said, yeah. God, God has given yeah. 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 Satan God. has no power except what man gives them. That's, That's right. right. And he God said, all he said, you have been delivered from that and the yes. enemy knows you've been yeah. delivered from it so yes. he runs from you yes. and he says you have the gift and we know it because there, there's a check yes. in our spirit Yes, we mm -hmm. have the Holy Spirit in us so anytime something like there's a check in our spirit when we know something's not right mm -hmm. yes um, I, my understanding is a lot of the white witchcraft which my ex-mother-in-law practiced and my daughter they think that it's acceptable to God because they're doing good works through the white witchcraft yeah, versus black there's witchcraft. Yeah. There's a lot so they're doing really good witches. And, and there's like on that show on TV, The Good Witch. Um, she only does good things. To, I mean, yeah. no, it's witchcraft. It's yeah. not. It's not from God. Yeah. If it's not from God, it's not good. It just occurred to me. 
I get that right. We know that God is good and perfect. Yes. Yes. We know that the devil is evil. Right. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. We are what God created us to be. Okay. He created us to be, and the first thing in our mind every morning when we get up should be, Lord, don't let me be deceived. Yes. 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 Hear your word from yes. me today. Yes. yes. And then so we can touch it. That's another reason for getting to know the word of God so well. Oh, yes. So that you know if something is said to you is not right. Yes. And at that day, I just knew what it meant when Jesus said that we were created in the image and likeness of God. Amen. Yes. And we were created in the yes. image and likeness of God. Yes, Rebecca. Uh, the word from the Lord came to the people in the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Yes. That letter, sin, has no feet. It can only be alive if you pick it up. Yes. Yes. So if you see sin, right. don't pick it up. Amen. 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 Don't pick it up. Good advice. And that's, sure. and that's great for us believers. We have family and friends that are more susceptible. And that's the reason we need to be able to recognize what these evil spirits do so that we can come against them. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also a scripture that says in 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that lives inside of me than he is in the world. Yes. Amen. Very good. Yes. So uh, another uh, one of Satan's oppressions is the uh, psychic TV hotlines. Oh, we can get away from those commercials. Um, it's an alarming exposure to witchcraft. In Psalms 1-1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. How many of those commercials go out and people are deceived by them? You know, and they're hurting. And then they, maybe they don't know God. I think I taught one time on evangelism where a 70-year-old man had never heard of Jesus Christ. Oh, there's people in the world who don't know Christ. Amen. And besides getting Christ's word out, we need to know if they're, if they're exposed to problems and so that we can help them. And we're going to go over some deliverance here, too. Um, we are not asked, we are not to ask anyone other than God for advice or direction. Right. We see what happens when we don't wait. And this was 1 Samuel 28, 5 to 8, and 16. This was where Saul disguised himself because of the war. He got impatient, and he went to a medium, which he had earlier outcast yeah. as being wrong. Yeah. And then disguised himself and told her that he wanted her to bring up a dead spirit, Samuel, so that he could get advice from Samuel, because Samuel used to give him advice all the time. And... Um, Samuel says, why do you consult me now that the Lord has turned away from you and become your enemy? So he had no other choice, but still, he, they are alive and real, and we need to know that so that we can not come against them. This is how we confront spirits and demons. When we confront an unevil, uh, evil or unclean spirit and demons, we have to know that we have the authority of Jesus Christ in us. We have to know the word. I believe when we're in this spiritual warfare, if you don't know the word, you're not, oh, where's my Bible? Let me look it up here. Okay, I know you're coming against me, but wait, let me find my Bible. <laughs> you have to know the word of God. It has to be in your heart. You have to know it and have confidence in what you're saying and coming against Satan with. You can't, uh, 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 God's word is in us. You know, that's not going to do it. Um, there are several scriptures on our authority that Jesus gives us whenever he leaves. Um, Matthew 10, 1. And when he called against us, and when he had called unto him, 
to his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. In Mark 13, 34, for the Son of Man is as man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants for his servants. Luke 9, 1 says, gave them power and authority over devils and, and cursed diseases. 2 Corinthians 10, 8 says, our authority which the Lord hath given us. I'm just reading part of these. Matthew 10, 7 to 8 says, cast, we have the authority to cast out devils freely. We have received freely give. Matthew 28, 18, 20 says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That was his commandment to us. Mark 3, 14 to 15, we have power to heal sickness and cast out devils. Mark 6, 7, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Acts 1, 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is our commission. The power that we have to cast out evil spirits, and there's more I have. I actually have a printout of all these scriptures. If you want to know these scriptures, I have a printout of here. Then? Yes. As you were reading those scriptures, the word kept coming to me, but do you use it? Right. The thing is, he has given us all this power but do we leave a person who is bound with an unclean spirit, do we leave them with that, or do we use the power we have to deliver them? Mm -hmm. We need to, and, and this is me speaking, I think that we need to teach them the Word of God. I think they need to know the Word of God, because it does say, I know in the Old Testament, Jesus cast out evil spirits and saved and unsaved and healed everybody. That was before he died on the cross and took all of those on him. I think today, they need to know the word of God or they need to know the consequences if you cast that evil spirit out and they do not change their ways, their house will be left empty. And they will be worse off than they were before you cast that spirit out. So they need to know the consequences if they don't change their ways. Okay. You, you've nailed it because if that, if that house has been cleansed, it has to be filled with something. Yes, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yes. Actually, it needs to be filled with the blood of Jesus. Yes. They and have to change their ways and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And you cannot leave them uh, empty. Unprotected. Unprotected. Yes. Right. Yes, Mom. Right. And people that are unsaved, you can't cast spirits out of them unless they actually come to you and want to be delivered, but they have to get saved first, of course. Right. Yes. And, you, and a lot of times when people even come and ask for prayer, I ask them a lot of times if they're saved. Because their prayer isn't even going to help exactly. them if they don't. That's right. If they don't they're believe, saved, right. they have to believe. believe. Yes. But you can always bind those spirits. If you run across somebody yes. that you know or feel like has a demonic spirit, uh, there's no reason to fear. But you can bind it. So you can bind their power. You can bind it. Shut its mouth. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So it cannot operate. Mm -hmm. Yes. I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I was just wanting to say this is a gift given freely to us. The ability to do this is in Acts 8, 9 to 11 and 18 to 19 when, um, who was it? Peter was casting out evil spirits and um, laying his hands and healing people. It was Simon who was a sorcerer and saw him doing this and said, oh, how can I do that? And he got, and Peter says, um, 
Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Amen. Amen. So it has to be freely given. You cannot expect any gain from helping somebody. Amen. Amen. Right. Because we also do not try to attempt to cast out, well, we kind of went over this already as we were talking, um, of an unbeliever. But we already discussed that, so... <laughs> Two has more power when you agree and have God on your side. And that's Matthew 18, 20, where it is, Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on her as to touching anything, that they shall ask and it shall be done in my Father's name, which is in heaven. So um, I know that my mom and I and mom and pastor have gone to homes which have, they thought that there was evil spirits present. Mm -hmm. So you don't ever go by yourself. You go with them as a believer. You pray up. Exactly. You know, have that anointing of God on you. Mm -hmm. Like she prayed all night in the spirit. The anointing was on her. If you're going to someone's house to, to bind evil spirits, then you need to go with somebody mm -hmm. and make sure that you have God's anointing on your life mm -hmm. and your spirit. Absolutely. So the deliverance can be violent and scary if you don't know what to expect. In Luke 9:42, it says, And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And we also know about the um, person uh, with a legion of devils. Yeah. I mean, no one, he couldn't be tamed. He was in chains and everything until God cast out all those spirits and put them into pigs and they all went and killed themselves. And then the man is sitting quietly at the feet of Jesus. You know, so we know that uh, it can be a violent experience if you don't know what you're expecting. Yes? Um, I've learned through the years that when you're going to go pray through a house for to cleanse or, or a person who thinks they may be struggling with the demonic spirit, the Bible says that we need to fast yes. first. We That's need to right. fast and yes. pray that yes. these will not come out except by prayer and fasting. Yes. Yes. And yes. so it's highly important to be ready, you know, prepared uh, through fasting and prayer yes. for that. Yes, thank you. Um, there's different levels of spirits, both good and bad. God created them, Colossians 1.16. For by him were all things created and are in heaven, and that are in the earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Um, I'm going to go over these a little fast. Thrones are the top level spirits. These spirits were anointed by God to rule Gentile nations, whereas God took it upon himself, though, to rule Israel. And uh, Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9 says, Most high assigned nations their land. He determined where people should live. He assigned to each nation a heavenly being. But Jacob's descendants he chose for himself. Um, and dominions, they are evil spirits that rule continents, like the spirit of Africa. You know, you heard of that. Principalities basically rule countries and states. And you can find it back up for that in Daniel 10, 11 to 13. says, I have come to answer your prayer. The angel of the prince of kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief angels, came to help me because I had been left there alone in Persia. So that was the area of this principality world. Powers are evil spirits ruling Providences or countries. It can be both evil or good. And then rulers of darkness, cities and towns, and the spiritual wickedness in high places are the ones who rule individuals. They come after the actual person, the ordinary person. Um, and then going for deliverance, it says one of the most important things to know about deliverance is that it is for Christians. And we kind of touched on this already. Make sure someone knows consequences if they don't want to change their life and commit it to God. When Jesus began his ministry and how he dealt with demons, this is the first account in Capernaum 
was the man of the unclean spirit. And that's in Mark 1, 23 to 26. It says, and there was in the synagogue, so this man's in church, a man with the unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. What would have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know this, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried out in a loud voice, he came out. So Jesus spoke directly. The spirit spoke to Jesus. So a spirit can speak if it has the, the power in a person. They can speak right to you. Jesus cast out evil spirits and healed everyone. He had not yet died for our sins. He rose again. Um, let me... Here is how to kind of for deliverance, just some things. We need to be humble. It says, when being delivered, you may lose your dignity for a moment, but you'll get it back. <laughs> Tell someone, if you're praying for them, have you ever, when people are slain in the Spirit, who cares? You're experiencing the Holy Spirit. I know when I was nine, I didn't care what was going on around me. I was with God, and I did not care. Um, so whatever's happening, you tell that person, just let it happen. It says, be honest. Uh, don't label it the spirit, but call it by its name, like the spirit of depression, not a moody spirit. You know, call it what it is. The spirit of depression, I rebuke you, and I bind you, and I call you out. Mm -hmm. However the, it is determined. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ. You know Christ can do all things, and you know that we have that authority. Mm -hmm. And repent of all sin. Uh, Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth the sin shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Um, it then goes back to if someone's ever had a, an abortion, um, and I'm guilty of that, uh, I need to ask forgiveness for murder. That's what it is. Um, so that is my, what I have to ask forgiveness for. So make sure that if you have any known sin to you, that you ask forgiveness for it. Break all ties with the occult, cursed organizations and objects of secret societies. The Freemasons is the worst. Um, you need to break all ties with these organizations. If you go on a Saturday out with the girls and you know that they practice witchcraft or something, you need to break that alliance. You need to get away from it. You need to uh, forgive others, uh, and even all uh, persons, governments, political affiliations, <laughs> <laughs> the IRS, or anyone that may hold something, some kind of bitterness or resentment in you. You need to forgive them. They know not what they do. You know, just and <clears throat> then just expel. That you want to get it out of you. Mm -hmm. Where do you so, cast it? Where do you cast it when it? Yes. It, they, they say you, you're supposed to put it somewhere else or something. Are you supposed to send it somewhere? Bind it. Send you it just bind it. You just bind it. Yeah, we don't want it going anyone else. Send it to hell. Walk it. That's what we call it. Back where you come from. It diminishes our power. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You have to pray for wisdom, too. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Before you even start, you want wisdom. Yes. 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 What is this? Is this a hurt? It's an illness. I mean, maybe they're just sick and it has nothing to do with it. Right. Wisdom and discernment. Yes. You know, hand in hand. Yes. Because you just can't. Because if you go in, like you said, without knowing the word, without knowing the words to say, because Jesus spoke the word to them. Yes. And if we don't know the yes. words to say, and we go in, and we're going, we're going unwise, undiscerned, and we're opening ourselves up. Yes, just like the seven sons of Siva. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be in so much trouble. Yes. yes. Jesus saves. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Then the children are so easy. Like, we talked before about maybe a, ch a, a more child or a small child wanting to receive something. They're so easy because they believe what you say. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
There was a boy allergic to all foods. A pastor explained to him that it was a bad spirit in him and that was causing it. And when the pastor prayed in the name of Jesus, he flew it out and the child went home and ate everything in the refrigerator and didn't have anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> that child believed. He was okay. The pastor said, I'm going to be healed when you're getting free of this. Uh, the reason some people are not delivered because they lack the repentance. They are not really sorry and want forgiveness for what they've done in the past. And they don't think they deserve it. Return. They lack desperation. Sometimes you get passive about a situation you've been in and you've had it for so long and it's just like, oh, you know, I'll die this way and they don't really want to get rid of it. Right. They're not desperate yet. They have wrong motives. Um, maybe they just want to get off the hook with the family member. Maybe someone's dragged them to church. Okay, you're going to go to the altar and get prayed for. You know, and they're like, okay, okay. Um, so they're asking amiss. Uh, Self-centeredness. They desire the attention, and they want the attention. They just, everybody look at me, I'm just this way. Um, Becomes their identity. Yes, yes. yes. Failure to break with occult objects. You know, they know that they shouldn't have a rabbit's foot in their pocket or a horseshoe or any kind of <laughs> idol, something that they consider an yeah. idol that they, good luck. You know, failure to break with evil or so, soulish relationships, and we talked about that already. If you know someone that's not right with God, I mean, we need to be evangelists and reach those lost. But as far as socializing, do what they are doing, mm -hmm. it's going to wear off on you. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, Tom. Um, a, a big one, I think, in my experience with people in my life, um, is that they are they have a lot of that God needs to prepare within them before they are ready. And I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but there's there are layers. Yeah, Especially, oh, yes. my husband was raised in a satanic cult and um, was abused since before he was born. So he, we had a lot of layers. We spent over a year in, in some very hardcore counseling, three hours a night, every week. You know, and, and, so, and then we, at home, it was like three nights a week he would have dreams bringing up the stuff that had to be healed. There was so much broken in him, so much healing that was needed in his spirit that there were layers of demonic stuff we could not deal with, God would bring it up and show us, and we were told by the Lord, bind it, don't, don't do anything else with it yet, and then when it was the right time, Jesus was there, and you could see Jesus, you know, I mean, I could tell you lots of stories, but Very example. It, yes. it, 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 he needed the preparation, he needed the freedom, he needed to also get to that point where he believed that God was bigger than the witchcraft, that God was bigger than the Satanists, so there is that level, it, it does take time sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And my granddaughter, I believe that she had a, a evil spirit working in her. And um, it seemed like it got worse before it got better. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you're dealing with the situation. Right. Bad, it's right. going to right. act up. It doesn't want it. It's like, right. like when the body got torn and was ripping you. It doesn't want to be expelled. Right. And I can say, too, um, that was after I had my sixth child already when we started to do these, like, three times a week. We were in spiritual warfare overnight. And I had six kids, homeschooling all of them. And I tell you what, those nights when I would get up the next day, I was not tired. Those are the times I was it's not tired. Yes. It was, it was, it was, God. It was, it was really, yeah. Yes. It was, it was good to walk, up, to walk with that. Yes. Just like there's something else that women, if anybody actually, should be aware of uh, these things they call uh, worry rock. And they're all shiny and pretty and everybody oh, must have oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have seen yeah. Christian women reach in there first, take it out, and, and I go, what is that? Oh, what are you doing? Right. That's my worry rock. Oh. And I said, you need to throw that as far as you can. <laughs> and ask God to oh, forgive you. That, I said, that's witchcraft. You know, when you said that, and, and I don't want to put any other religion down or not, but when you said that, what came to mind were the beads. Yes. 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 You know? <laughs> 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 yes. So, uh, I didn't hear it. The, the rosary. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything we depend on other than 
other than God. Yeah, that's right. You're sitting right. there on rosary beads and not even thinking about God. Oh, God. Okay. Something's wrong. Oh, no. Yeah, when they tell you when you, yeah. you when you get confirmed to kiss the ring of the bishop that he's yeah. oh, you. No. And I refused it. I even that before I was a Christian and I said I do not bow down to anybody but Jesus or to God, I said. Yeah. And and I threw the whole the whole <laughs> and you know, the bishop said to me, I thought my uncle was going to whack me when I got home because he was a priest. And the bishop looked at me and said, you know the heart of God. That's the thing. I never mm -hmm. forgot that. And I wasn't going to kiss that right. Mm -hmm. That was <laughs> not. Yeah. Oh, you I, was, I was 11 when that between 10 and 11. That was the wisdom of God. It was. Yes. I didn't know Jesus back yes. then. I wasn't kissing that ring. <laughs> so once this person is delivered, the way they're going to keep it, is they have to make Jesus Lord. Yes. And that's it's in Matthew 12, 44 to 45, if you want that reference. Next is the garment of praise is in place. Says the devil doesn't like praise. Have you ever been starting to sing in church and, and worship God and all of a sudden 20 thoughts go through your head and I'm like, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I'm saying I'm trying to keep all praise yes. God. Yes. I've been in situations that I've been nervous or whatever, the dentist office, and I'm sitting there yes. singing praise oh, yes. and in my mind, is, and the dentist came in and says, You don't even need a sedative. <laughs> Submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. That is the other thing is we need to submit to God and resist Satan. Mm -hmm. We need to come under discipline. Um, especially self-discipline, family, church, school, refusal to rebel or to disobey. Mm -hmm. Because that's a sin. Rebellion is a sin. Mm -hmm. And 1 Samuel 5.23 is that reference. We need to make Jesus central in our life. John 12, 31 to 32. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. I love that verse. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Amen. And all men will be drawn to him. If yes. we lift him up, all men will be drawn to Jesus. Amen. So, and we need to go and sin no more. Uh, when God makes his way of escape, it is our decision to either run for the exit or to continue to, to the flesh. Yeah. So we can run to God and escape that temptation, or we can stay in the flesh. The war is in our mind. I uh, love Joyce Myers. Battlefield of the mind. Mm -hmm. That yes. is where it's at. It starts right here. Mm -hmm. If we have a thought, bad thought, cast it down immediately. Don't entertain it. Thank you, Jesus. Um, yes. Don't believe what you've been told. <laughs> and then you do not. Don't believe it. Yeah. Because like the end says, that becomes your identity. Mm -hmm. Don't believe it. And that's why words are so powerful. Oh, yes. Especially yes. with children. Like I said, children believe you. When you say something to children, mm -hmm. they trust you and believe you because yeah. they have such an innocence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why God uh, speaks about if anybody ever hurt one of his precious loved mm -hmm. ones. Because they are so believing. But that's how we need to be with God. Exactly. Yes. Like little children and just believe in him and trust in him. He says, unless you be like a little child, you may not enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Word of God also teaches us, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, the NIV says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And anytime we have 
something going on in our life, we just have to depend on God to see us through it. And above all, we have to have faith. Faith is so important. James 12, 19 says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devil also believes and trembles. Amen. So he trembles at the Amen. Amen. of God. Amen. And he knows that we have that authority in us. Satan, his demons, unclean spirits will speak just enough truth to get somebody to gain their confidence and trust in them. He makes sin look appealing. And that's how he, that's the hook. You know, the bait. That's the bait. The hook is when he's got you. It says, I believe that this is how many saints will be deceived in the last days. The Antichrist will speak just enough truth to, to make it sound right. Mm -hmm. And then gain people's trust. Then when he has them believing and trusting in him, the hammer will come down, so to speak. So I pray that you have enough and learned enough to have a hunger to continue. And we as children of God should walk in freedom more than those who do not know God. Mm -hmm. So there is no law for us because we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And I did finish a little, or I skipped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are some prayers up here for specific things that just might give you ideas of how to pray for yourself. And it has to come from your heart. Anytime that you pray to God, it comes from your heart, sincerely. Mm -hmm. um, so these are just ideas. I also, somebody had asked for more of the protection prayer things. Yes, Tom? I was just going to add, um, one of the really important things when you go through any kind of, either with yourself, you know, when you're cleansing, deliverance, whatever, uh, binding, um, but one of the very, very important things is to walk through some forgiveness. Yes. Because those things Absolutely. usually, I mean, we usually will find out why it, why we were open to whatever. Yes. And then we have to walk through a forgiveness where we forgive the cause, whoever, whether it was a person, you know, for many people it was a parent, you know, that yes. or abuse or something. But we need to, at, at the very least, say, Lord, help me forgive them. Mm -hmm. And also we need to forgive ourselves, not, because, right. not but, but for receiving the accusations or, or for just believing that we are worth it. We just say, Lord, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for accepting it because it isn't true. This isn't your word. And it's just a good way to just keep those And that's why we open. need God's discernment and knowledge. Because sometimes we may not be aware of it because we're living it. So we need God's discernment. God, show me in my heart. What do I need to change? Yeah. What, what's wrong? What do I need to do from here, Lord? I need your wisdom, your guidance, your suggestion. It makes the, our Father a little bit more real and when you prayer. It is not into temptation. Yes. But it is deliver us from temptation. This teaching really brings that in a bigger realm of what um, our responsibility is what temptation is and what temptation is and what our responsibility is. Yeah. Because you know, we too, you said it, we have to be disciplined. You know, and as, as a child and teenager, because of the rebellion, I was never disciplined. Mm -hmm. And it took me many, many years after becoming a Christian. In fact, I still deal with some things on this discipline in my life. Oh, you do. But oh, yeah. you have to be, that makes it so much more real, that, that one little part to, to say, <coughs> you know, deliver us from evil. I have, we have a little bit more time and I want to read this to you. This is just a, a prayer as a starting point to break addiction. It says, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I submit all of my soul, my body, my desires, and my emotions to you. I denounce any conscious or subconscious addictive tendencies formed in my past. I denounce the emotional, physical, and spiritual ties formed by my involvement in any unhealthy habits. Thank you for forgiving and cleansing me from all unrighteousness right now. I lose myself from all ties to past relationships that were formed to keep me tied to my addiction. Uproot and bind all connections through dependencies, perversions, and enslaving thoughts that hold me captive and oppressed. 
I bind every evil spirit that reinforced addiction in my life through ungodly associations and temptations. Lord, I ask you to cleanse my mind and to erase totally from my soulish desires all illicit habitual acts. Set me free so that I may serve only the purpose of God and walk in the divine destiny that you have preordained for my life. Father, now I have asked you this knowing that it is in accordance with your will for my life. I believe I am totally forgiven and set free. I commit myself to you, my soul and body, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So that's one of the prayers. I was going to say, you might hand those out at Thanksgiving, uh, uh, the written. You know, that'd be kind of cool to hand those out when they come for the turkeys. Anybody else has that? Yes. Love prayer. Oh, yes. There are controlling spirits, and that prayer addresses the controlling yes. spirit yes. of addiction. Yes. If we would find out what the controlling spirit is and bind that and cast yes. it into hell, yes. uh, then literally the axe is put to the root of the tree of defilement and the tree dies. Yes. The tree of defilement dies. Yes, yes. Very good. And it's broken for all generations. Yeah. Yeah. Curses are broken oh, yeah. and never come back. Yeah. 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 Yeah.